That bumper can only mean one thing. It's time to continue with our SSA RLCS action. We had an amazing day yesterday. I'm Ultraism bringing you today's action on the host job. And next to me is Pyro J and Muzz. Pyro, you were the one who got to see some incredible action yesterday. We're going to jump straight into it. Uh, first, first, as my host jobs, I should ask you how you're doing. How are you doing, Pyro? Oh, altruism. You're too, too kind. Listen, I've got the orange lights behind me. It's Halloween season. It's spooky vibes completely. So any surprises that happen, I'm prepared for them. And yesterday was absolutely a surprise. Reformed over May Contain Nuts. For May Contain Nuts, their first defeat. Oh, that was something to experience, altruism. There were a few things that were happening there. Skill steal was present everywhere on the map. When Make It Day were trying to set up passing plays, Skill Steel was there to intercept. Reform showcased a grand amount of trust in each other. There were players all the way down the other field getting goal line demolitions just to set up a counter-attack play. That takes a bunch of trust. And finally, little underperforming from the side of Make It Day Nuts. The, 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 the games were very, very close. So it only took maybe a goal, maybe two for May Contain Nuts to send it into overtime. And some of the chances on the shot taking they had just didn't land. So a lot of things combined. Overall, an insane performance from Reformed. That Now they come in for today's top eight altruism as the number one seed. How about that? How about that, right? What a change up that we've had to this SSA dynamic. And isn't that just the beauty of SSA as a whole is the fact <laughs> that you really just, you never know what's going to happen. Last year, we said Orlando Pirates couldn't be beaten. Beginning of split number two, we had them taken down by Bravado at that stage. And it seems like this year, we're starting it a little bit early. Muzz, on your side, how are you doing? And did you get, did you get any other jump scares from yesterday in the Halloween spirit? I mean, yeah, altruism, good to be here. Thank you. SSA action here, day number two. It's going to be firing and oh, jump scares galore. What went on yesterday? White Rabbit Game and beat Apex out. That was nice and close. They three and won them uh, there as well. So that was good. But I think, again, the big one reformed versus make, make contain nuts doing superbly well. Maybe one of the shockers or the disappointing ones was Team Espionage mm -hmm. going down 0 and 3, losing there to Sun Moon and LMR just tough um yeah you don't want to see that team of siphon and olympic and boys at the bottom they're finishing 15th but you know, this is how it happens sometimes in the swiss stages you know it is grueling and unfortunately you have to fight tooth and nail just to make that top eight there also there was some there's good fixtures all around and you know we've made it here to saturday indeed that that middle of the field power i've got to speak to you about mm. this because man last year we said that ssa was completely open in the center and this year it seems even more we got teams like astronic lupa rosso fighting so hard trying to build up their name right now lupa rosso made up of you know high school level players uh we've got people like sun moon esports who had to fight through the open qualifiers then through the closed qualifiers and still only just managed to to not qualify for today's action Whereas other teams, Apex, the Bros, a team that we're really happy to see up here, uh, a stalwart in the community, ATK White Rabbit, teams that have so much potential, but haven't quite hit the mark just yet, or at least have had to struggle to get to this point. How are you feeling about SSA and especially that middle of the bracket? I feel like it's coming up to be a region like all the regions are today, which is fantastic. I mean, the big talk of the town, when you look at NA, when you look at EU, even other regions as well is, oh man, the top eight, who's it gonna be? It, it's it's deep right now. The, the talent is all across the top 16. And when we have conversations like, wait, espionage went out in round three, Okay, who filled in that gap? You're looking at Sun Moon Esport, a team that took some heavy losses against Red Crown, but mm. then went all the way to round five of Swiss as a surprise. You're looking at the Bros and Apex, who didn't make top eight of last regional, but admittedly, I did predict to go top eight this regional because felt like they were going to show up. They did just that. And you still have teams like Astronic and Lupo that are still pushing, that are still forcing the best out of these teams to make that top eight stand uh it's good to see the middle of the pack of ssa be at the stage that it is today still a ways to go and that's just the fact altruism of all these teams being completely new lineups okay over the course of the season these teams will get better more cohesive and every every stage is just going to be that bit more exciting Oh, 100%. And Muzz, that, that brings us to an interesting topic there is 
We've seen such a change up in team dynamics. We've seen teams improve vastly over a very short amount of time. We saw the first time our international experience from the teams of Bravado and Orlando Pirates last year starting to trickle down a little bit. What do you think is the biggest defining factor for the improvement of so many of these teams? Well, I mean, we have now three teams that have all had players that have gone on to play at that World Championship in Dallas. And so they come back and they bring in that experience and what it means to play the high level altruism. And just as all of our teams do continue within the RLCS, and this, of course, is our second season, we're only going to see improvement and teams just pushing themselves to form stronger teams or let's find better coaches or let's do more work when it comes to VOD reviews and just improve. You know, the Rocket League kind of out here was serious, but they never took it this serious. Now everyone is shifting up a gear to try to see can we be amongst the best teams that SSA has to offer. And it's only pushing all of the players that we have out here. Oh, 100%, right? That motivation, the fact that we've got really good prize pools, that we've got international recognition on the line, that some of the international organizations are starting to grab hold of our SSA talent and go, okay, this is the seed that we want to invest in super early. And uh, Pyro J, you're as, as the international spokesperson for our player here. <laughs> What, what is an international org really looking like? I mean, we've got people like May Contain Nuts who doesn't currently mm. have an org and they're wanting, obviously, the big names to now start taking them seriously. There's a lot of talk around the town of the SSA region about what these international orgs mean for joining the scene. Uh, the, of course, every individual case is its own case, but I think overall uh, it's inevitable. Uh, it, it's good to get this team, to get this region at a world stage, to get everyone eyes on it because it deserves that. And you look at uh, other regions like Oceana, uh, they have a, one of their best teams as Kansas City Pioneers. Mm -hmm. Kansas City is in the central rural area of United States of America, and they are picking up a team over there. You have Susquehanna Sonics, who are in the middle of Pennsylvania, United States, picking up a European team. This is the nature of esports. And as it progresses and it injects itself into SSA, um, I think that in the most part it's going to be a good thing for this region to get more international attention there's already international coaches involved in this region people moving to this region as players it was only a matter of time that it's going to be orgs as well and that, that mention of the international coaches is quite a big aspect for us we're starting to get people who are much more aware of that larger scale meta game that are bringing their awareness here and must we talked about it a little bit yesterday, the impact that a coach could make versus what work the individual players have to make. And i got to ask you right now, we've had so much revitalization of this scene. We've since gone free to play, since we got our own servers. We have seen the biggest boom in SA Esports since ever. Literally, we doubled or tripled the number of people really taking this game seriously. How long do you think it's going to take before that international exposure, those coaches, the people playing there, is going to start trickling down to the new generations? And when can we start to see our guys maybe taking on some of that, that international exposure into their own personal gameplay? I mean, we've got such young players here. I mean, if you kind of just look at the average age of any of these Rocket League players, you know, anywhere from 19 up to, say, 22, 23 years old, right? I think Skill Steel may be amongst one of the oldest. We just we already have young hungry players that want to push themselves and so this high level of competition is doing so well you know we always talk about um you know lupa rosso and that team we look at unity we've got these youngsters that are already competing at such a high level and they can only grow and get better when they face against your atk's your lander pirates your may contain nuts right and so just everything is getting elevated the longer we stay in the rlcs the longer ssa gets a shout and the more teams that go over to play World Cups and come back, you know, there should only be decent levels of growth as we continue along this path that is the RLCS. Well, if you guys are joining us, maybe you just came here because we got drops finally for our, our streams. Uh, if, if you are an international person who hasn't seen it, you can definitely tell that the passion here is palpable. We're talking about it on the desk, and I'm sure you'll get to see it when we get into our games. Because... Today, we start to get to really refining who is going to be left in this competition. There's a couple of people who are, or a couple of teams at least, that are definitely there at the top looking to make a name for themselves. And there's some players here who've gotten to top eight, 
but would love to push it a little bit more. Mm. And so taking a look at today's action now, we've got four games for you. It is the quarterfinals here, starting at the top, Reformed versus Apex Gaming. Reformed obviously coming off of that massive win yesterday against uh, MCN, coming in as the top seed. Apex struggling to make a name for themselves, coming in as your bottom seed for this number eight. MCN wanting to rally, going to have to take on a white rabbit gaming side who potentially hasn't shown their best foot yet, but may contain nuts. Probably quite comfortable with that personal matchup. Pirates XD coming off on the other side of that bracket. They were renowned as the second best team in Sub-Saharan Africa last or last split in the Fall Cup. Um, and they're taking on Bros, the team probably with the most passion and awareness in the, in the scene. And then at the bottom, a massive clash coming out there. Red Crown versus ATK. And Muzz, I'm going to start with you on this one. Are there any games there that really jump out at you and say, this is going to be one hell of a clash? This one, they're about to cover definitely ATK versus Red Crown. It's going to be a huge shout, right? We've already seen, of course, on the ATK side, Worthy having tons of consistency last season so he's taken forward a new atk roster but on the other side there we've seen a decent uh, fall open uh, results coming out from sweaty and uh, zero and so this one is going to be a tough one then possibly if we take a look at reformed versus apex game and it should be another decent one there as well but reformed possibly riding quite a high right now to be able to win that uh, series kind of middle of the table there possibly more one-sided but you know these two uh these two end series tops yep. and pyro I, I gotta ask so red crown versus mm. atk definitely not a <laughs> foregone conclusion but what about our other three games you know reformed coming through proving that they can take out mm. our previous champions may contain nuts with already that mantle on their shoulders and i don't think they're going to be dissuaded and then pirates <laughs> xd one of the longest running teams here or at least certainly got the most international exposure um is there really a chance? Do you expect there to be a possibility of Apex, Wide Rabbit, or Bros forming some sort of uh, comeback, some sort of big throw um, usurping? Mm. Yes, as the short answer, as the longer answer. And I say this as the biggest spokesperson of Reform, the biggest hype man of Reform. Apex Gaming have a great shot. Can we be honest with ourselves? I mean, this is a team that should have been in the top eight last regional. Um, I say should have as likely to have been if they didn't forfeit their round five in Swiss last regional. And they are ready to shake up the scene. Think of last season in SSA. What teams do you remember? Digital Devils, DNMK, two teams that would make a far, far run in the lower bracket or even the upper bracket and make some upsets. Original from Digital Devils, defunct from DNMK, and then you still have Lackstar from the former Apex team. This is a fantastic unit. This is a team that I've been waiting to see more of. I, I would argue that Reformed Apex Gaming is one of is going to be one of the best matches of the day. Do I take White Rabbit Gaming and the Bros as more likely to make those upsets? Maybe not. I think they'll still be great matches, and I think they still deserve to be in the top eight and push that envelope and force the scene, but. Apex Gaming, a team that I'm watching today. Well, guys, I hope you're excited as we are because we are bringing you all four of those games here today. Not a moment of action going to be missed. We've learned from yesterday. Uh, more importantly, though, we want to showcase the top talent that SSA has. And we're going to be starting it off with ATK versus Red Crown Esports. Uh, an incredibly good clash and a very tight matchup between these two. Met on nearly every single stats. And... Muzz, let's come to you. This ATK lineup has not shown everything that they possibly could, and they're kind of a difficult team to, to really predict on what they're going to be using. Wurti, the obvious South African well-known name, Wailu coming out from the Reunion Islands, and then the very unknown quantity that is Geizo. How are you feeling about ATK today? I mean, they haven't really lived up to, to their true potential just yet, right? We saw them finish eighth there in the fall open as well. So they didn't have kind of the best time running through our first regional. This team has got talent and they can do well altruism. But again, we haven't seen those pieces fit together just yet. Looking at their opponents, right? Red Crown Esports. Well, this team's been popping off. They, I think they have a top four finish from that fall uh, open. So, you know, they... We're going to have to see, can ATK 
you know, pull up their socks to beat this red car on esports roster? Or is it just going to be one of those things where they take a loss in the quarterfinals? I mean, they need to be doing a lot chat to be able to beat red crown. Okay, so let's what, stick with you. What is your prediction? I think almost the easy answer, I want to say it's going to be Red Crown Esports over ATK. Red Crown over ATK. And uh, if you guys want to get involved in your predictions as well in the Twitch chat, you can put down there hashtag ATK if you believe that they are going to come through with their very mixed roster. Or if you believe Red Crown Esports has got this in the bag, hashtag CRWN, crown without the O. Uh, you can get involved and we'd love to know how you are backing these teams here today. And then just before we jump into our game, Pyro, who takes it and why? Keep it short and simple. I'm taking Red Crown. Give me them over ATK. All right, first match of the day. The top eight Muzz is in order, and our first goal is nearly that close. Ram puts up just that on the goal line to deny it. Muzz, uh, SSA, it's given us no time to breathe. We are hot on the track. Yeah, unfortunately, we just cannot gather our thoughts as these six players jump straight into the fray. There was so an early demo coming out from zero as well. Guys who almost score in for ATK, Pyro. And so both of these teams very eager to start out day two and put something on the board for all the fans at home. It's going to be a sticky best of five, but I think one in which we're all very excited to be a part of. Yeah, and let's think about past performances as well. These two teams meeting in the top 16 qualifier. It was a sweep on the side of Red Crown. ATK maybe coming into this match with a sense of revenge. Surely there have been events uh, in the meantime since then. But now that they're back at it uh, and you have expected these teams to meet each other even again since then, uh, it's a really interesting matchup. I, I think it has an air of mystery as well and a potential upset factor from ATK. DK, definitely one of those games you're looking at that could be the closest of the day. Muzz, oh, last regional, we had so many sweeps. I think a 4-1. We're looking for maybe a closer series this time. It's Red Crown, though. Our predicted winners of the series that are going to start off just right. Oh, sweaty Clarence as well, beating out these last two defenders just to be able to score from the left-hand side. Did look like 0-1 to the course. Just a little bit of trouble there in the box as well. Ram hanging on that midfield, but there it goes. A red crown pyro picking up our first goal of the series and possibly what everyone did expect at home. Again, we, we do want to see what ATK can bring to the table here. We kind of didn't see the best that they could pull off last regional. And so they do have everything to play for here. But of course, red crown, they do need to, of course, keep that winning momentum and make sure that they can continue to be a top five team. Absolutely. I mean, guys are already putting up two shots as a player that we've been very curious about since the European transfer and trying to think about how they're going to plug in on this team. If that's going to be the shot taker, then so be it. It's a pass out to the box that no one is there for, but a demolition on the sweaty clearance. Uh, Wilu, oh, it's a set up him for the double tap. No boost to follow the ball. The backboard presence as well from Red Crown Sweaty and Air Dribble Pass. One defender wants to dunk it for the second, but Guys out sends it away. And Wilu finds a clear. A double demo there, Muzz. I'm expecting a lot of demolitions, but mostly on the side from Red Crown. This is a team who loves to amp up the disruption factor. But on the other side, ATK, they're ready to pounce. They're ready to respond. It's wordy. Oh, and Gaizu just bringing that one off the wall. They've been able to beat out Ram to pass down to Worthy, getting that goal, finding the equalizer there for ATK. And so ATK back in our action here. Just unfortunately, that double commit coming out from Red Crown, not able uh, Ram to get up onto that near post, able to beat out Gaizu down to Worthy. And so here we stand, Pyro J. It's gonna be it's gonna be anyone's ball game, right? These. I think th these two teams are a lot closer than kind of people suspect, right? And so it's going to be one of those gloriously well-fought matches. 
Certainly feels like that. The battlegrounds are here, it has to say, and this is one of the matches to prove it. That's for sure. Ram takes out Wheelu. I think the disruption slowly getting started now for Red Crown to find those goal line demolitions and create the shooting lanes. But when Wheelu can read balls like that off the side wall, it makes it very difficult for Red Crown to start some long standing possessions. Wheelu is smart to take that 50 50 high, and that's a bouncer shot from guys out nobody expects the bounce shot or maybe the heat sinking shot from wheelu saved away by sweaty clearance but the possession it maintains this onslaught here shots being made by atk they just keep pummeling at the box they're trying to make something work wheelu oh opportunity getting kept out there by sweaty clearance just so much offensive pressure here being applied by atk Kept out though, incredibly because were to take another shot, that's gonna go completely wide. Wheelu doesn't find a second man in the midfield and already sweaty. Clarence sends a long ball down. Oh my word, Pirate J. Shots coming out galore. Oh, certainly, but the game's still tied. We are nearly at overtime. As regulation time starts to hit those triple zeros, players are more inclined to take those risks, maybe to get that go-ahead goal overtime. Definitely a tense situation. Sweaty Clarence trying to work this ball back to the box. Zero in perfect position to pick this up off of the backboard. Nobody in the shooting lane. Ram already peeled off from the play. Has to backflip into position. Sweaty Clarence working that goal line again, but the bump doesn't connect. In fact, he's flat tired from Geisel. Long clear now from Wordy. We're down to single digits. Can they make a play here? ATK from the backboard. Guys out, ready. Shot on target. There it is, guys out. Go ahead, goal, just in time. And ATK spoil the party. And just that little bump there from Wordy onto Sweaty Clarence allows Gauza just to come in from that left hand side. Cleans up in what was a beautiful start coming out from Wordy to get the ATK goal here. And they go one up against Red Crown. Well, here it is, as the clock does tick down, it should be ATK picking up game number one here. I'm happy to be wrong, Pyro Joy, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Most certainly. Hey, listen, as I said, last regional, we had so many sweeps in the quarterfinals. It feels like maybe we could get a longer series out of this. This start is wonderful to see, not just at ATK taking the first win, but it, that it was this close. Even look at the stat sheet. You have a lot of those score lines being right at the midsection. Maybe ATK having the better hand on some of those sides. Moz, I want to talk about the demolitions because coming into this match, I expected Red Crown to have that on tap. I expected that to be a key factor they were working with in this series. They're dead even here uh, at, I want to say, yeah, four. Oh, actually five from ATK. They're winning that game. I mean, you know what? Everyone's taken a small page out of the comp playbook and it's like, how many demos can we get going? Everyone's enjoying the demo play, it seems. And I think we're going to see a lot more of it as well, Pirate J. It's going to be dirty on the field. But, you know, that's the Rocket League we come to enjoy right now. Hit that last defender in the box. Get a second or third man to come in and score. This is clinical Rocket League. It is indeed an ATK with the tone setter of the top eight. Listen, ATK, they want that top four appearance. Badly, as I said, they want to spoil the party for Red Crowd Esports, and they are right in motion to do just that. A very close, tight knit game for game number one as we head to Aquadome for game two. Oh, and already a shot. They're coming out from Willow and Worthy. Oh boy, yeah. Well, this is it, Pyro J ATK. They've shown us that they have come to play. I'm looking at Red Crown and I'm thinking, where is the cohesion? Where's the synergy here right off the kickoff? That was a miss from Zero and Sweaty Clarence right on the goal line. And that's a position where you have to be at your most staunch. Your defense has to be able to bat away that first shot. They were able to do it in game one off the first possession from ATK, but not in game two. Here they come with a response. It's Ram to equalize. Oh, and sweaty Clarence with just that aerial flight throughout the ball. They did have to get past Gauzo. And then, of course, Ram beating Worthy. Gauzo stuck there in the box. And so the very quick equalizer they're coming out from Red Crown. Oh, boy. Well, you know, we've spoken about the hype of both these teams. We know it's going to be an absolute stellar of a ball game. And no, none of these teams, uh, excuse me, have disappointed us just yet. 
Ooh, almost there, but it is a save. ATK trying to bring this game back in their favor. Already two goals in this first minute. We could see more sweaty clearance finding it between the post forces. Guys out to make a save. Ram wants to keep this possession going, wants to keep that offensive rotation tight, but unable to do so as midfield presence is back now for ATK. All skies past Wordy. It's a massive pinch play there from Willu. Ram able to clear it out to the sidewall. Safer territory. But there is Ram to find the goal line. Another clear for them. After the first couple of goals were uh, here into that back and forth. I've been impressed with maybe some of the passing options from ATK. I like how Geisau is elevating the gameplay, taking some of the shots high. But so far, these teams still looking evenly matched. And we also need to remember that Worthy has his own international experience of what, as well, of course, going to the Commonwealth Games and representing a South African roster there. So, you know, we are sending players overseas where they are getting international experience and they are playing against much better competition. While Gauzo just could send that home. I'm not sure the last rotating player there just wasn't home. Speed Sweaty Clarence. Oh, and then Zero couldn't get back there. There's a trend to this game so far, and it is the defense eroding right now for Red Crown Esports. When you would expect someone to be back, when you would expect reinforcements to be in place, the positioning, the readiness, it is not prepared. So Red Crown Esports have a lot to repair here. As we get going still in this series, they can easily give away leads if they break down like that sweaty clearance that defensive clear is looking a little bit better had it not hit off the ceiling maybe zero would be ready for a counterattack. guys out down to wordy and he takes it low for the oh. shot perfectly placed atk on a roll oh my golly goodness yeah the one two between both these players wordy find gauzo found wordy again able to score that goal you know you were talking a little previously about passing plays well my golly goodness the atk put on the passes there for us pyro and they're up here by two. Wheelu almost taking a shot. That has to get very uh, quickly kept out by zero. Almost a fourth for ATK. My golly goodness. Well, this team has come to play today. Zero best friends with the crossbar there. Had to hit the ball off of it twice to get the uh, unfriendly roll there for ATK. And boy, a roll they would have been on if they would have scored a third in a row there to bring it to a three goal lead instead. It is Red Crown to keep things sort of consistent on defense. I'm, I'm seeing some backflips coming out of Ram and some backboard connections out to the midfield that just aren't uh, meeting their teammates. But these individual plays, they could be what win o wins over the game for Red Crown. It's a solid air dribble there, but it's taken other, to the other side. Willu out to the box and the guy's out ready for the ball already. Like I said earlier, he's not afraid to elevate the gameplay, go for those air dribbles, those high shots quicker than any other player on this field. That one's going to be a miss though. And that could make it difficult for ATK to keep this possession going. Red Crown are re ready to attack now. Oh yeah, long shot there coming out, but already getting interrupted by a ATK player there in that defensive third. And just your guys are doing so phenomenally well up front, making sure that he just uh, receives such decent passing plays from the team and they're able to shoot so incredibly well this side. Still up by two here as we inch closer to that one minute mark in the business end of game number two on Aquadome. Pyro J, it's close. Guys, out. Is, that, is that a hat trick? That's two or a hat trick? Oh, oh, it's two, but I think I think a hat trick is coming because coming. guys out. It looks like he cannot be stopped. Oh, that two goals and one assist. He is an MVP so far for the game and spearheading the effort for ATK. One minute remaining and at a time when Red Crown was supposed to bring this series, this game back into control for themselves. They are slipping ATK. At a position where it looks like they cannot be stopped. And Red Crown, what do you have still in store to keep this series close? Ram, oh. what a read from the back wall. First of all, the, in, the, the insight to know that this ball isn't on target, but then second to put it on target. Incredible. Oh my 
goodness, that touch from zero to find Ram. And as you said, the small minute touch that Ram needed just to put that one home. Phenomenal shot on there. Still down by two, but definitely pulling this game back ever so slowly. Oh, Pyro J, it's, it's been happening here, but within 30 seconds, can we see another two goals get into the back of the net? We might. They, they can work off of this momentum, but they got to do it quick. Will Lou being a nuisance near the goal line, getting those extra, extra touches, making it so difficult for Red Crown right now to break out of their own half. And with those small touches as well, it's just not going to be enough. Guys, out second touch off the backboard. Wordy wants to put this on target or just slow down the play. Either way, it works in ATK's favor. They are going to continue to spread their dominance on this series. A 2-0 lead for ATK. ATK. Oh, my. It is uh, Red Crown Esports in shambles. They are going to need to work off of that last goal for the next one. Oh, yeah. I mean, tell me about it, right? This Dutch import that is Guy Zhao, he's doing so phenomenally well up front there. Paraje, two shots, two saves, two goals. ATK. They're on fire right now. It does sound like we're going to have a timeout. Pyro J and I think perfect timing here in game number two probably called by Red Crown Esports as well to just figure out what they need to do. It looks like Wheelie also doesn't seem to be in our lobby at this time. Yeah, so maybe there's some car changes. Maybe there's some talks between the company right now of Red Crown Esports. Again, I mean, listen, it's not this simple, Muzz, but I am still looking for that disruption factor to play in favor of this team. They play at their best when their opponents are averaging two Rocket League cars instead of three on the pitch. That is, in my mind, part of the solution for this squad, but... It goes deeper than that. The defense has not been intact for this team. It started from the beginning of game two when two defenders missed the ball outright on the goal line. That should have been an, an immediate clear. This is ATK working off of the mistakes from Red Crown. They are punishing every minute miscue on the field, and they're going to continue to do that. So for me, uh, before... Red Crowns start to work at that disruption game. They've got to clean up the defense. They've got to be more consistent. That could put them on the right end. But ATK, what a start. I don't know if this is sweep territory, Muzz, but a 2-0 start for ATK is looking pretty good. Yep, it's looking pretty darn good as well. And they just absolutely have found the foot in that they need against a very strong Red Crown outfit. You know, I think when you're a team that's used to kind of quote unquote stomping teams and you you firing off and just you've got that combo between zero and sweat that's so good you know you sometimes underestimate your opponents and you kind of not too sure just how to go about playing the game and atk have figured it out here they're two to the good pyro and that's important because of course best of five series in an elimination quarterfinal i didn't expect you know, and no one might have expected to see Red Crown go home this early, but it is a possible here with only one potential game left. Yeah, think back to last regional. I mean, we, we saw ATK and Reformed. After ATK were coming off of two sweeps against Reformed, Reformed swept ATK in the quarterfinals. You never really know what to expect at this stage. Folks, I'll tell you what you can't expect, though. Game number three, ATK to a lead in this series. They want that top for title badly and they're here to work for it you know everyone might forget from last season that atk was a darn consistent team as well they did finish third in those overall rankings and that's important because worthy is still on this atk roster but ram is going to open up the scoring here on dfha stadium and there's a first goal that is ever so important. You think about this, Red Crown give up this loss. They have to for they have to force a best of seven reverse sweep. That is not a position they want to be in. They want to come out with this win so that they can breathe easy on their survival route in this match. It's an important first goal for Red Crown, Muzz, but they've got a long ways to go. That second goal almost in zero with the read on the clear two, but it's batted out. Oh, my goodness. It's just quick counterattack. They're coming out from Geyser. was able to snipe the 100 in the corner as well and push that ball down the left-hand flank. Just counterattacks being so quick here 
in this series. Oh, guys are, again, taking a shot. They kept up by Sweaty. He seems to be the one that's doing all the striking up front by eight, for ATK, but that's okay because it's working. He's making shots. He's getting goals. And unfortunately, you know, we've, talking, we've spoken about the defense of uh, Red Crown. You know, it's just been... It's had a few holes in, right? It's been a good cheese. That's been a good cheese that's had, you know, decent holes in. And, you know, they need to try plug those, Pyro J. Yeah, I think that's most certainly the case, though. Red Crown Esports, they haven't really had to play much defense, yet this match, they've done a great job of keeping this ball in their opponent's end and uh, making ATK uncomfortable in this situation. So how much longer can they do just that? Sweaty Clarence, good read off the backboard. Ram is there to take the shot, and you have almost everybody from ATK leaping at that attempted goal in a situation like that atk can pounce again oh my red crown esports right there from the two goal position off of the ceiling zero still rotating around for this one guys out can't connect on it but that infield pass going to no one sweaty clarence still rotating back on defense and this could be a chance now for atk just a ball back here at worthy has to take this off the left hand side oh really picked up there by zero Still looking for a goal here, ATK. Will they be able to find the back of the net as well? Long shot there from Wojty, though. Kept out that near post. Guys, though, coming from the left-hand side. Yeah, doesn't have anything in the tank, though. Has to fight off zero. Wojty with that interruption does incredibly well. We look going up. Ram should be able to push this all the way out. Chance moving at the other end here. Double demolition makes a momentary 2v2. ATK looking to pounce on this opportunity. Guys out meeting the ball though before it lands in. Ram, big chance here. Comes off of the crossbar. And Wordy there to get an extra 50-50 as well. We're looking for that goal line disruption, but Wordy instead rotating out just to steal boost instead. And Red Crown Esports, again, little time that they've had to spend on defense at this point. They've only credited one save, but that's only because we've seen two shots now from ATK. We're already at the two-minute stance, Muzz. And we got to start talking about the fact that this game can be won by one single goal. That seems to be kind of the storyline of what we've seen yesterday as well. You know, just one or two goals is really all it takes to get through. And I mean, it hasn't been high scoring. And that's also just testament to just, you know, how good the teams are becoming against each other. They aren't complete blowouts anymore. You know, long gone, I think, are going to be the kind of 6-1, 7-2 games. You know, we're going to keep it right here, one to nothing. And that's how these teams are going to be progressing throughout the rest of the fall split. Well, there you go. One minute remaining now. ATK, it's now or never if you want to keep this sweep alive. They've got to work on this blue end. That's been the one thing that they haven't been able to do for much long. Zero avoiding the bump and getting the save as well. Will Lou back around from the backboard. Can't get that shot on target. Wordy sends to the sidewall and Zero keeps that ball high. Keeps it out of the hands of ATK. Here's Sweaty Clarence there for the second goal. Red Crown Esports are back. Yeah, Ram getting up with a beautiful aerial pass here just to get it onto the backboard. For Sweaty to beat out Wilu. And there we go. Red Crown Esports here. 2 to the good Pyro. They need to get a game in this overall series here so they can extend us, you know, through in this quarterfinals here. But here we go. 30 seconds remaining. Guys are being so incredibly well when he does have his hands on the ball. But Ram already disarming him. Open ball in. No shot from. Red Crown, oh, that one was an opportunity to go and waste, but yeah, Worthy already doing also superbly well this series. No boost in the tank here from any ATK players as the clock ticks down. Probably no opportunity to be able to score two within five, I doubt it. Yeah, it's not looking very likely. Red Crown able to take this game and 
uh, ensure that this series will not be a sweep in the favor of ATK. There it is, a win in favor of Red Crown. Plus, I want to talk about the fact that this is coming off of the time out. Red Crown Esports looking so much more consistent, so much more well prepared in this game. And in the history of SSA, we have not seen a lot of timeouts. Even when they are called, they don't typically go the way of the team that called it. This is a good indication for Red Crown to find their footing. Yeah, I mean, we've also, uh, I think, teams out here are also kind of using the timeouts a little late you know they wait until game three game four and then like mm. okay snap we need to get a timeout right and so you know that early timeout definitely worth its uh, weight in gold here because of course best seven long uh, games ahead of us but there we go red crown able to pick one pick one off of atk here and atk you know they didn't put anything on the board yet, even though they did take the four shots their pirate J. so you know, the, the table's possibly slowly turning here for Red Crown Esports. Yeah, we're seeing the staunch defense out of Red Crown Esports that I was looking for all series long. That just was not there the first two games. It feels like if Red Crown are able to play the game that they've designed and anticipated to play all day long, they should come out with the expected result of their win. They were top four last regional they're looking to do that again this regional finally this team finds their footing can they get back in this series and equalize it to 2-2 two, two. game four is on yeah and a really sweaty clarence picking up that demo as well it does seem to be the story we are going to be talking about yao and willu <laughs> almost beating out sweaty clarence there to find himself a decent goal in this game number four yes yeah, sweaty with that ball not too much pressure right now being applied by Red Crown. Should go wide as well into the hands of Geisel. Can he be that sweat? He does get past one ram though. Get it in the shot. Little backboard action. Oh, no second Ooh. touch there from Ram. He's been so good with those little small redirects. Didn't go in this time around. He has in Ram with that uh, second goal. And I think game two, that was just ludicrous. A perfect touch. He's still trying to find those perfect touches. That one doesn't come in perfectly. But already Red Crown Esports starting to work the backboard of ATK on their offensive streak. Look at that maneuver from Ram getting past both defenders on that play. It could open up a shooting lane and it most certainly will. Zero's there to take out the final defender that even had a chance at the save first on the board for red crowd oh and that beautiful demo zero just in the right time right place getting out that last defender and ram able to bring it around from that right hand side so once again taking the lead here game number three you know semblance of it and so can we see red crown esports bring back a minor reverse here from ATK. Demos out coming galore there. This time on to zero. Willu takes the shot though. Is kept out. Can work to do something with this ball right now. He does have guys though, uh, above him but zero. will be able to push this out. Ram was beneath that. Now they're going to have to play from their own corner. There does pop over one. Finds Gauzo on that midline. Sweaty Clarence sort of pushed it out wide. Willu able to collect and pick this up. Doesn't get his 100 though and gets demo. Double demo. Oh my goodness, Red Crown. Yeah, Red Crown are playing exactly the game they want to play now. I think it's a 70-30 split in possession in their favor. They're starting to get those demolition plays up as well. And this is exactly how this team loves to play. So when they are informed, that's the time for ATK to start to worry. They need more long-standing possessions. They need to start intercepting these passes in the midfield as well and start to work the goal line. That's a great start for them. Wordy tries to clear the lane for Will Lu, but there's a diving defender still in the way. Big resiliency moment there for Red Crown to keep ATK at bay, but for how much longer? Guys out so close to reading that off of the ceiling, already moving around the corner as well, staying close to that ball, earning an extra 50-50, so massive on that challenge, but zero keen and quick to it the tempo the pace of play for red crown a little too fast right now for eight to get a hold on ram can't put that on target and red crown are gonna have to hope for more on their next possession and just the play has been so kind of midfield orientated right there are so few shots coming up from either side about two saves there only on red crown esports as well pyro j just no one 
Really taking too many opportunities. Well, talking about opportunities, the Gauza is going to find the back of the net off of a sweet Wurti pass here from the corner. I told you this is Gauza's comfort zone. Aerial shots. Look at how he does some aerial acrobatics with that FedEx to put the shot right under the crossbar. A massive moment for ATK there to get back in this game and start to stunt the momentum of Red Crown. This game could be massive here, but zero demolition. Red Crown back to their antics, and they're looking to get that lead back. Finally, an equalizer on our hands here. And guys are, as you've mentioned, doing so incredibly well up oh. there in the air. Yeah, Ram taking that shot, though. Unfortunately, not finding the back of the net there once again. Ram just being quite unlucky in front of the net there. Guys, gets past one, and Willu will be able to sink it and send it home. We are back at the start of the series where the trend of the match was ATK working off of the mistakes from Red Crown. There's some shots that need to be buried, and when they're not, they turn on them. Massive play from ATK to start to work the tempo of this game in their favor. And with a lead, with about a minute to go, they could bring themselves to match point. Oh, opportunity is coming in thick and fast here for ATK. Just guys, so pushing this one all the way back, just, you know, kind of wasting a little bit of time on the clock as we get down to this remaining one minute chair. Nice little pass into the infield. Did they love playing from that corner, were to you? Ball back here for Red Crown. Oh, so incredibly close. I think that was worthy off of the backboard, just having it cleared at the finest of margins. And now Zero again gets up there. Not to mention the tank ramp gets a demo onto Worthy as well. Willu, can you do something with it again? That corner bounce out to Ram. Midfield interruption there from Worthy, but Zero's up. He cannot beat Willu. 30 seconds here, Pyro J. It's, it's anyone's game. Oh. Oh, that was 20 way players, too close. It's unbelievable on the goal line. A beast on the back line, able to send it away. But there has to be more than that. Only two shots registered right now for Red Crown. They need another just to give themselves a chance to get back in this game. Clock down to single digits. Will Lou going to take the shot? It's so well placed. Forces the defender to make a touch, and it's still not enough. Will Lou seals the deal. And just waiting so ever patiently, reading Ram, getting that pass and jumping off the wall like a spider monkey to put that one down. Well, they ATK. Two goal difference right now. Can they hold on? They should be able to, and they'll be taking out game number four here. There you have it, ATK with the game four win, putting them at a 3-1 lead in the series. We saw that timeout from Red Crown after game two, and all those loose ends start to be tied up from unraveled to cohesive. Looked Red Crown Esports, but now in game four, after the minutes went by, they began to unravel again. Some shots that should go in for this Red Crown team did not find the back of the net. And what happened directly after ATK punished. This is a team that is primed in position to play the long game. They're going the bend don't break mentality and waiting for their opponents to make a mistake. That's the strategy buzz. It's working very well right now for ATK and unless red crown clean up their act, they're not going to survive in this series. Yeah, and those seven shots that are coming up between Geisel and Willu as well. They're just doing so well up front. They're getting set up by Wurti. He always finds the pinches from a corner, ping-ponging into that midfield. No defender either getting rid of Wurti or pre-jumping on that near post to get rid of that ball. And just it seems to be working right now. So unless you can interrupt that play... I'm sure ATK are just going to continue to do it. They're going to continue to push either corner and find a second player midfield. And you've got to do something about that if you are Red Crown Esports. Well, there you have it. I mean, match point now for ATK. What can they do to send this series home? We take it to Wasteland for game number five. We, we are all here for the spooky vibes. This is by far the scariest map. Even Wasteland Night is just, it has a certain air to it. And could the drums be beckoning for the end of the road for Red Crown Esports? Or will they find a way to get back into it? We can 
Certainly hope so, yeah, as we already see just Red Crown Esports applying that pressure onto ATK, putting ATK onto the back foot, has zero with the possession. He's trying to bring it here up this red red hand side. Does get the demo out onto Geyser as well. Sweaty, can it bring it down for Ram? Shoots wide. That's going to be unfortunate. Zero though, trying again for a second attempt, but kept out by Geyser and a sweaty Clarence should be there underfoot to pick that one up. He does so. Can he bring it over the midway line? He can't. As Wulu is there, zero underfoot. Opportunities going wide, therefore, ATK not able to put that one home. Something massive already for ATK is that they're not being caught in their own half. You look at game three and the win for Red Crown, and they had maybe a 70 30, 80 20 split lion's share of possession. That's not the case for the first minute of this game number five. So I think it's already a good indication for ATK to be moving up the field, applying pressure in the form of bumps, in the form of demos, and now in the form of a goal. Guys out there to follow after the goal line harassment from Wordy. Yep, understands exactly what he has to do. Gets that pass from the left hand side. It goes immediately into the box. Looks for that last defender. And who else to be there in the middle of the play but Geisel and finds himself another goal. And this Dutch import right now, Pirate J, is doing phenomenal work for ATK. Absolutely. 1-0 lead now for ATK. So looking very solid for them. Red Crown, it is time to defend. It is time to tie up those loose ends once again. Show us that you are a top four team right here. Or will it be guys out finding the shot off of the crossbar? Not quite there. Zero looking for a reset. Cannot find it. Has to let Sweaty Clarence move in for that shot. Demolition on the side of guys out. Ready to find their way back out of their own half. But wordy. That infield pass is intercepted by Ram. Wonderful play there for Red Crown. They're trying to get back this control in the series. And just those are the moments that need to be cut and outright. Can you stop waiting from that corner? Can you intercept the ball before it already finds its way into the center? Half the job will be done in stopping the offense. That is ATK and how phenomenally well they've used that play from Worthy to find a second and third man in the midfield to shoot. Offense here being applied here from ATK. Ball gets shot down. It's going to be Worthy and a blue player on the bottom there just getting lost hands and touch onto that ball. Sweaty Clarence was zero, I think. No, zero. Oh, unfortunate. Oh, oh so close. And we've seen this before from Red Crown. The, the goal line defenders, they're in position to make a save, yet their touch is not strong enough. The pressure just mounting too much for Red Crown to handle right now. And with ATK's lead, with ATK's momentum, with ATK on their third goal, they're looking at that finish line thinking they may have secured this game. Still a ways to go, but in good standing. Oh, and Geyser has to beat out the defender, gets past two, comes around that left-hand side, pops the ball infield, finds Willu, and gets a third here for ATK. And they're not done just yet, Jay. Geyser pushing the offense. Ram and Sweaty, though, having to play from their own corner. They have to try get this into some form of threatening position. Ram's in the middle of the field. Ram will score! Well, there it is, Red Crown. If they needed an answer, it is here. Sweaty Clarence finds that beautiful infield pass to Ram. He didn't even have to move. He had to slam on the brakes just a bit. But the positioning was right there. And this is what we've wanted to see from Red Crown all along. Yes, they've had their long possessions. Yes, they've had their chances. But have they connected infield like that before with that pinpoint accuracy? Not quite now you see them crowding their opponent's box trying to get shot takers right in that lane to find the same exact play again hey if it ain't broke don't fix it if that's what works right now for red crown they've got to find two more chances just like that and a little bit you know they've got a lot more time to spare as well we kind of see they seem to be getting a resurgence when there's just not enough left for them to do so with a minute 20 on the clock here red crown can comfortably st score two goals. Zero did take the opportunity. They was kept up by Worthy. Sweaty Clarence, they're trying to find a pinch. He didn't so do so, but he's able to get it onto this midway line. Ram with the backup. Zero is on that left-hand side, but they were already Worthy. Jumping in. Can he pull off the same move? Oh, so close. They really was 
in the center and wait impatiently. Zero does get that demo on to Geizo. Worthy beating out Sweaty though. Counter attack here being formed here by ATK. Can they get post ram? Wheelu takes a shot onto that backboard. Sweaty as well finds the pinch. Oh my goodness. It, it's so fast paced here, Pirate Jet. It's just so much action and so many shots coming Ooh. out. Oh, and Sweaty will find the back of the board. Not the back of the board, back there of the net. It is. You were right, Buzz. It was very fast paced and it was quick enough to find a second goal now for Red Crown. A big two for here. Sweaty is not ready to give up. Had the assist. Now the goal. Can they find one more, Buzz? 30 seconds in a dream for Red Crown. Well, their dreams might be able to come true here. Oh, Worthy taking the shot that got kept up by Ram. That would have been an absolute nail in the coffin if Worthy did score that Ram. Sends it downfield. Gazo able to push it out. He did have sweaty Clarence almost on the receiving end of that zero to take a shot. It's going to rebound back into the midfield. Ram out to the corner. Can he find the pinch? He won't be able to. Sweaty is underfoot. 10 seconds remaining. Can Red Crown finally find a buzzer beater? I don't think it's going to be possible here. Yeah, the clock is ticking down. They have to keep it alive. One more attempt. Zero's here. Can they bring it in? It hasn't gone down just yet. Still up, Pyro J. There's a chance. Sweaty alive. Zero there. Ram with the shot. It's denied. And there it is to the ground. ATK take the quarterfinals win. Their first top four placement this season of the second regional for the fall split. Congratulations, ATK. And Muzz for Red Crown. It was just too little too late. They started working back. They started activating that offense wonderful infield passes wonderful pressure but with only two goals couldn't secure the third atk hold on and, and this is that consistency we know that atk had coming out from last season right they want to get these wins they want to try contest for a top eight and red crown were in their way and sorry to say this eighth place team is now pushed into the semifinals and atk go uh, go on to survive another day Wonderful work from them, most assuredly. I'm curious how altruism feels about the action that we just had here, ATK on top. Well, I started today's uh, conversation with, do we expect this to be foregone conclusions? And for sure, it is not. I think this opens up the whole thing. Both of you gents did predict that Red Crown would take this. And I, I can understand why. Yesterday, they played so well. So I think, Pyro, let's, let's start with you. What do you think the difference was today? Was it ATK just rallying towards a team that we haven't seen yet this weekend? I mean, granted, they haven't done badly. The only teams they've lost to is Reformed, May Contain, Nuts, and Orlando Pyro. So kind of keeping that streak alive, or was this just Red Crown not being the same team as yesterday? Credits due to ATK altruism. Don't get me wrong. I think they played very consistently and the play they played the ball game they needed to working off of the mistakes from Red Crown. There was simply too much that I saw on the defensive line. Um, it, it all came about at the beginning of game two when they gave up that very first goal, uh, missing the defense. There were some shots that just were not on target. I don't think we saw the highest ceiling today from Red Crown Esports coming out at the start of this top eight. I expect them to make another push still this split, but credit again due to ATK because they played the game they needed to. ATK played an incredible game. you got to give them credit where that is. Those passing plays were beautiful. And guys, we are going to join in with their players in a little interview in just a couple of secs. So we want to hear it from the horse's mouth what ATK is doing so well. But just before then, Muzz, they were passing plays. They were reading the play so well. Very few mistakes that you've got to give credit for to ATK at the end of this how are we feeling about ATK's chances going forward in the rest of this competition? Is this the old ATK? I mean, they were considered one of the top two potentially teams mm -hmm. at the beginning of last year's split. Uh, obviously, a very different roster. Is this a roster that they can feel very comfortable with? I mean, I think they can feel pretty comfortable with this. You know, when we looked at that fall open, they were a bit shaky then. Of course, a lot of teams were shaky back then. You know, we didn't 
the chemistry and the synergy possibly wasn't built just yet. Well, we've seen a different ATK come to show up today. Worthy finding such phenomenal passes in field for both uh, Willu and Geisel. And just, man, the shooting coming up from ATK was superb. And of course, you know, that together with not the kind of best defense coming out from Red Crown Esports meant that ATK was able to absolutely... They went ham on that best of seven there and they deserve a big 4-1 win there. Well, big ups to Red Crown Esports for coming this far. Top eight, certainly nothing to be shamed about. A really good performance from them being picked up by that new organization. A really nice symbol of what SSA has to offer. But unfortunately, that is the end of their action here for this weekend. Uh, definitely going to be rallying and trying to fix a couple of those mistakes. Maybe try to take control of the game more into your own hands and get that backboard a little bit more tightly just allows you to build up towards your opponent's goals a little more concisely but still some great moments of brilliance from that team and very excited to see that our top eight rosters are still looking so good in this region makes me so excited guys we are going to be going to a very quick intermission and then we're going to be jumping back in with an interview from the atk players so don't go anywhere Ladies and gentlemen, we're joined by Worty, the only South African on this roster. And incredible big congratulations. Let's start off with the very obvious. You must be ecstatic to have made that top four position. Yeah, of course. I think uh, everyone wasn't pleased with the first performance that we had in the first split, but uh, we worked on things and I'm glad that it's paid off. Well, I want to talk, Wordy, what exactly were the things you were working on? You, you want to take it back to last regional? It wasn't the performance you were looking for, obviously, against Reformed, having had the better end of that team, but then getting swept out of the quarterfinals. What were some major takeaways for your team coming to day two of main event to implement today? I think, personally, it was more of, well, the roster had only been together for about a week and a half at that point in time so everyone was still trying to get used to each other it's a lot of different play styles language barrier it was basically working the basics into playing rocket league so that we could start playing as a team like as best as we could I mean, you, you guys, so you guys brought Gizu there on from that coaching role previously because he was a coach to your previous roster there. Was that kind of just a natural transition for you guys, Worthy, or how, you know, what made you think that Gizu was going to, you know, fit well with your guys' play style? I think for a long time in South African Rocket League, especially, we're usually stuck with the same pool of players. 
And as much as it's just changing between the same pool of players, that it took a bit too long for bubble players to get to the level that people were expecting. It, in a sense, was easier, but I felt like it was also bringing something new, something that will probably happen in the future, let's be honest, knowing uh, if we ever get a major spot, that is. Yeah. But yeah, I, th I think it was just a good bring to the region. Like, it's just something different. It's something to try. We will experiment. Why not? Everyone yeah. else can see how the Why not? Go. It's nice to see that you are getting that backing from the international recognition. And now comes the big one, right? You've already cracked that that sort of barrier that you set up for yourselves last time. You got to the top four position. And now comes the really tough one because you've only lost against three teams in this entire competition. Everyone else, you've looked so comfortable. It's Reformed, it's Orlando Pirates, and it's MCN. And right now, if Orlando Pirates do win their next match, as they're the favorites to do, how do you feel? I mean, you've gone so close against them, taking them to game five and basically every single one. I think we've uh, gotten to the point where we're playing the way that we theoretically wanted to play against them. Because we had the plan. Implementing it was really difficult in the beginning stages. We had so much other problems, so many other problems to sort out. Now we've finally looking like a team that I had the potential in the beginning. I, I saw it in the beginning. I just didn't know how long it would take to get to this level. I'm glad that we're here now, but it's that one more step before I feel like we can become a little bit more dominant in the region. But yeah, <laughs> that's about it, I, I'd say. Pyro. Well, there you have it, altruism. I mean, we have heard from Wordy incredible stuff here. I know we had the question in the green room as well, Wordy. So give us the pronunciations pronunciations of your teammates as well, so we all can get them right the next time. Uh, let's hear it, Wordy. Okay, I got you. So coming as somebody who uh, South African uh, cast has messed up my own name, I have to do this for my teammates. Yeah, I feel like there's an obligation. So it's Wordy, Willu, and Kizo. That's it. Those are the three. Okay, are we good? Are we good for next the uh, next couple of casts? <laughs> on on Twitch sad. chat, Twitch chat. Are we good at this stage? We will do our best job at this stage to get it right there. Muzz, your last question. Uh, so Worthy, I think you know, I, uh, no team I think ever claims to fear another team, or they're not. They don't really worry about their opponents. But you know, if you had to just tell me which team do you think is the scariest one that you don't really want to face up against? After yesterday's games, I'm genuinely... I've actually lost a lot of the fear that I had after yesterday's games. I genuinely would probably look at May Contain Nuts more than Pirates. But... Okay, alright. After yesterday, I, I feel like even yesterday we were not playing as well as we could have, especially with, you know, not having our coach around as much as we wanted to. Especially today, he's actually not here. So, I feel like the boys have come a long way. And there's, there's nothing to be afraid of. Just play your own style. Have fun. That's okay, you there we go. Yeah, you heard it first. Is there anything else you could ever want to hear from a person going into the rest of the season? Is just, we are confident, we are ready for this. That is an incredible way to approach this series. And you guys have certainly impressed today. Your passing plays were fantastic. Your awareness of what you were trying to do was there. And there's always, for every team, little things you can improve on, little cleaner hits that you can get. But you guys have certainly impressed a lot of people here today. Your, the Twitch chat was buzzing for you guys. The number of copy pastas there were uh, you, uh, ubiquitous, shall we say. Everyone coming up behind you there. So well done for getting this far. Lots of work still to do, but it's effectively only two more matches that you have to win. Congratulations and good luck for the rest of the series here. Thank you so much. Enjoy your cast, gents. Appreciate you for having me. Thank you. Well, guys, that has been Worty, obviously, from ATK representing. And we're going to not stop any of the action right now. Bye to Muzz for now. You may have noticed he quickly grew a magnificent beard. Uh, wait, <laughs> there's only one person who could have a beard like that. It is, of course, the wonderful Ryan. Uh, welcome to the cast there, Greybeard. Yeah, thank you very much. Good to be here. And and, and a bit of, I, I don't, do we count that last win, that last series as an upset? I'm not sure. I'm 80k blowing hot and cold, winning amazing series, but then losing ones that you feel they should have won. And I wasn't sure about this. I thought Crown would take it, but we have a new player in the top four now. 
a new player in the top four or an old player if you think about it like that the atk uh brand at least having been uh, pretty familiar with those upper bracket runs uh from last year's seasons we are going to be moving swiftly along to our second match of the day pirates xd versus the bros and Greybeard, i'm going to stick with you you haven't had a lot of time to chat <laughs> yet right now this has to be a game that's so close to your heart. Pirates XD, obviously a very big name in the scene. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the favorite coming in here, but Bros is one of those organizations that you just want to love, right? Well, you know, the, <clears throat> the Bros, I, I, I've been a bit frustrated with the Bros because from the beginning, they looked like a roster that were to me should have been a solid top eight they shouldn't they certainly shouldn't have been struggling as much as they have to get out of swiss but they find themselves in top eight something they failed to do in the first regional so here they are and what i'm looking for is can they can they find that synergy as a team consistency as a team to uh to take on the challenge of of orlando pirates uh, but on the other side pirates as well have been having their own you know they've been winning they've been getting the results but uh but not smoothly they've had to grind them out yeah that's that's the thing is you know orlando pirates has they, they've looked good except for atk that's been their big counter right now so far looking pretty good i mean yesterday we saw them take a 3-0 against red crown who's one of those other top eight teams top four top six wherever you want to kind of lump that middle of the ssa roster and i, I want to know pyro what do you think about this matchup the bros came through three and two in swiss stages the only, they basically did fantastically well in the games that they won managing to take a three and oh there versus orient esports three and oh versus sun moon and three one versus Lupa roster but as soon as they come up against these big names i don't know if it's a psychological thing or what but they go down three and oh and is this the time where they really break that streak yeah, well, and it's not just a big name either. This is the Orlando Pirates. This new season, we came into it uh, expecting them as a top two team, and they cemented that in the very first regional, getting second place. I think anyone that... team it, and it's not just uh cams and happy meal okay it is Eliakim, my favorite player to watch at this point uh, i swear one of the speediest players spends more time near the ceiling than the ground um but the bros i, I watched firsthand they play against reformed and though they got swept uh this team is not looking bad at all they are a top 18 of ssa i do truly believe christian w i expect to be one of those players to really surprise some folks and hit some wonderful shots uh and they're marked up with a full good roster so i think this is still a team that can bring a great series to orlando pirates pyro let's stick with you for a second because you mentioned eliakim he is obviously the new player to this roster cam and happy meal having played for so long together on that bravado lineup and you can see that he has definitely made an impact definitely not a trade down in any respect form what sort of role do you feel he's playing in this team? Because you got someone like Happy Meal, who's that stalwart mm. defender in the back line, and Cams, who just seems to cause yeah. chaos and explosions wherever he goes. <laughs> well, you got to talk about the shoes that he's filling, right? And so it was to die for uh, a player that you look to facilitate on every counterattack, on every scoring play. So big shoes to fill. I think Eliakim has done more than just fill that role. It's been a very unique role to still be skying up to the ceiling and taking redirects, taking crazy shots, hitting those double taps that we know Eliakim can do. But it's more than that. When you have a speedy player, player like Eliakim is historically of someone that's starving their opponents of resources, taking up very critical boost pads and containers. Uh, he plays not only a very mechanical scoring role, but also a disruptive role. And that's what makes Orlando Pirates still so deadly. Yeah, 100%. And that's going to be difficult for the team of bros to now counter out. And that's why I want to chat to you, Greybeard. You have seen what Orlando Pirates can do for a long time. And you know what these players from bros can do. You know, none of these players are new to the scene in any way. Mm. They are going to come up against one of the most oppressive teams that we have seen so far. Eliakim causing that sort of boost starvation in the back line. Cam always there looking for blood. And the team as a whole just wanting to crush down their opponents through that consistent pressure. How does a team like bros come out here? Is it something that they need to change up specifically for Orlando Pirates? Or do they just play their own game? 
I, I think, I, well, listen, I think Orlando Pirates will play Orlando Pirates. From what I've seen of them is that they are, they are working toward a plan. And I think as time goes, we're starting to see it formulate and become very effective and sort of rallying around, uh, around Eli. And, and for me, the bros, though, the bros, what I'm looking for here, and on paper, this is an Orlando Pirates win, but I, I, I want to see... Is there an emergence of that synergy with the team? And can they take down? I don't want to see them go down in a sweep here. Can they take at least two games off Orlando of Pirates and start looking as threatening as they potentially should be? So that I'm guessing that's your prediction then, Greybeard, is that Orlando Pirates should take this, but four to two would still be mm. a, a good sign here from the bros. Oh, yeah. That, that, I think that's what I'm going with. Yeah, that's absolutely fair. If you guys want to get involved with this sort of predictions as well, make sure to put that hashtag OP for Orlando Pirates in the chat or hashtag bro, B-R-O, if you think that the underdogs still have a good chance of bringing this back. Pyro, are you going with the tried and true paper? Uh, or do you think we could get our second potential upset of the day? Well, the first match was very tough and I already took an L on the predictions, but <laughs> I'm looking for a W here. I think Orlando Pirates still have to be the favorite against the bros, mm. against really anyone that isn't make it not. So give me Orlando Pirates. Yeah, that's fair. I'm pretty sure the whole of Twitch chat knows where my alliances lie. Uh, I was hosting their, their shirt yesterday, Orlando Pirates, a team that has that international exposure that is coming through and is looking as strong as they've ever been. So Orlando Pirates, three votes from the desk here, but that's not to say bros without the love of the community and without the love of the casters as well. I'm going to hand off to our wonderful casters for this game, Pyro J and Greybeard. Good luck. Should be a cracker of a series. Uh, and let's see what sort of ridiculous plays can happen. Over, over to you guys. <laughs> All right, Greybeard. Match number two, Orlando Pirates versus the Bros. Altruism is asking what kind of plays we're going to see. I think Eliakim had the clip of the week last regional mm. with a, a pass out from Cams and just a ridiculous top corner redirect. I, we could see some wonderful plays here. Uh, yeah, and you know he's a he's a player that works has worked really hard over his game since the start of uh, SSA in the in the scene, and it's been lovely to see his progress within the scene, getting into a top top team like Orlando Pirates, and then I, you know. Uh, any new team is going to take a bit of time to find that synergy and work, but they are, they do seem to be getting better and better as time goes. Um, and I don't think, I, I, I don't think they've hit a standard that they believe they can get to. I think they've f formula firmed themselves up in the second spot, but now they've got to get themselves into the position of like Bravado did last season, challenging number one. We are in that beautiful point of the season, the beginnings that it's still <laughs> there is the potential to reach for these teams. So I couldn't agree more, Greybeard. I, I mm. think Orlando Pirates right now, they are on the upswing and still have so much farther to go. And hey, it starts here. If this team wants to be a top two team and, you know, break into that one spot as well. They need to take down teams like these that are coming into that top mm. eight, trying to make a name for themselves and put them right back in their place. So as much as we say, yes, the bros, we want to see uh, a team that can challenge the top two. At the same point, Orlando Pirates, they're looking to make a statement here. Absolutely, and I think that's that's their point of view. I, I don't think it's I don't think it's about the win for them. It's the manner in which they win, how they go about their business here. Can they can they get it done quickly and efficiently? And that's that's pretty much what they are going to want what want to see and remove any lingering questions there might be because now they are with 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 the nuts team losing in Swiss and and look, it's amazing that they went down and, and great for reformed. But let's not completely lose our heads about about the Swiss stage, but sure. it does open up questions that, oh, you know, the 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 monster the monster does bleed and and <laughs> pirates don't want to have those sorts of questions about them. So it's not as much about the win as it is about how they go about the business of doing it. Most definitely. Yeah. SSA is now in a new space in of itself where every single team has had that loss now. So it, it presents that ability for yeah, Orlando Pirates to look at that one spot, but also the bros to say, hey, 
we can be that upsetter too, okay? If reform do it, maybe we can as well. So it brings a little excitement. It brings a little bit of momentum into this series, Greybeard, um, into this game one that we are still so close to having. Match number two, folks. The last series was won quite convincingly by one team, ATK. Uh, we've had a lot of sweeps last regional, Greybeard, in this quarterfinal standpoint. So we'll see if we get a close one here. Well, well, the first one wasn't a sweep, which was good. ATK, who did get swept at this stage in the last regional, now uh, taking a convincing win. Not a sweep, 4-1, so pre still pretty good. And uh, I'm hoping we don't get one here. I want to see the bros really fight. And, and not to draw the conclusion Ooh. at the end, Cans with an early one, double tap down! And it's touched out by Upego. But what a positive start from the Orlando Pirates team. Oh, they're already getting started, which is what you love to see. I mean, this is exactly how Orlando Pirates operate. Cams and Eliakim look for both of them to be activated there high above the crossbar to send meteors down to the goal line it's beautiful the way they do it but the bros standing up they were ready for the double tap they were ready for that save as well and trying to get some momentum now themselves yeah it's good that they've gotten out and they've got something going on the other side because as well as they did to kind of stand their ground and that save off the double attempt from cams was great it's hard to withstand over long periods of time and this is good they're getting some good time good coverage over on the other side good pressure building it's a bit of a it's overpopulated in that blue corner there but an attempt on goal is tucked away but the bros building building pressure over there building pressure in the form of two shots registered so far and hey count a save on those score sheets as well 5 bs a diving save to get that ball away i think uh, with what we're seeing already for the Atlanta pirates who which is a team that wants to break out and set the tone early this is good standing for the bros not only a couple of shots that are uh putting pressure on Orlando Pirates, but also some wonderful saves. It is a sign and a show of resiliency for this team. How long can they survive that shot right off the post? Well, what they got going for them is that they're not just clearing the ball out. They've had, oh my word, a shot and goal hits the post. Eli with the follow doesn't get there. They're not just panic clearing. They are able to transition into pressure of their own. But a, de oh, a demo here is going to clear the path. What about that demo from Eli removing the third man? And then Happy just had to coax uh, escort walking the granny across the road into the goal. <laughs> They said, okay, double taps haven't worked. Uh, these infield passes, not cutting it. All right, can we just eliminate the defense? Can, can we just go there and walk the ball in? That's what they do for their first one. Cam's looking for a little bit of a special sauce there for the second one. Thought maybe there was a reset for a triple tap, but he'll let it go. Christian W, the next with the reset, not able to surge that ball as far as maybe he had imagined. Cam's, this looks deadly, especially as Happy Meal as the follow up where's Eliakim rotating back Orlando Pirates they do not want to be punished going too aggressive on these offensive pushes they're happy with their one goal lead and trying to make it two yeah well where they did very well in Swiss is that once they did have a lead they were very good at holding on they and 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 more often than not if they're scoring first they're going to take down the game happy meal having to do some defensive work and he does it magnificently keeps it out so that's been a strong point for them um, so they're going to, uh, if they continue that here, obviously it works out well for them, but they're going to want to get a little bit of daylight, a little bit of a cushion with a second or a third goal. And uh, for the time being, looking for it. Yeah, it's going to go in. Cams finds the net as we've been talking about them looking for that second. Well, and this is an offensive powerhouse, this duo here. Happy Meal and Cams, they've played so well together for so long. It's its not surprising to see these passes, these, these dump passes from Happy Meal just look automatic. So there it is for their second goal, already reaching double digits in the shot count. Orlando Pirates couldn't be asking for a better start here. They get that cushion. Now it's time to hold on. 
All right, your Pagum trying to make something happen. He's got nobody in support there. Uh, 5BS finally making his way into the half to try and present something. Your Pagum on the middle line, Christian W, who scored a couple of hat tricks last night, so he'll be looking to extend that. Your Pago against the backboard. Christian goes up, realizes he's not going to get it. How far can Atlanta Pirates? They get the clear. Your Pago, though, saw it coming, and this is good. Building the pressure, not letting it get out of the Atlanta Pirates half for any length of time and hopefully eventually see them running out of boost and being pressured massively on their own goal line. And that's the one thing that just hasn't come yet. You expect that finishing oh. factor to play a factor, a force here, but it's Cam's instead. Flexing those wall dashes after, you love to see it, but 3-0 now for Orlando Pirates. You let this team break out on the counterattacks, they will punish. And, you know, it is so frustrating. They had such a good pair to play that the bros leading up to that, building pressure, building pressure. But, you know, when you have a team that can keep their composure in defense and then that have that lightning quick transition, I mean, they, they cleared the ball, tap, tap, over the other side, they find the net. And it can be quite frustrating as, as uh, for a team like bros who were doing well getting over there, looking for that first goal only to be counted. And uh, they still go in pursuit. They will find the first and that's at least the second time we've seen Orlando Pirates concede once they had a three-goal lead. But uh, better then than when you have no lead at all. That's a fair statement to make. The bros, after all the pressure that they maintained, finally have something to show for it. And it was a lack of goal line defense there from Orlando Pirates. So it comes to the tune of what you were singing, Greybeard, of can they have enough pressure to eliminate the defense? strip them of the resources and keep them away they've done it once can they manage a second try it's more of a fourth try now for Orlando Pirates breathing down the neck of the pros and they find a fourth yeah and, and what and what was great about that I was talking about the synergy of Orlando Pirates and looking like they're slowly growing into whatever their game plan has been but seeing that goal that was everybody involved the the teamwork to set that up and then be executed fantastic stuff and, and and also the point we made is not just about the win the manner in which they're winning and and certainly in game one and let's not get too ahead of ourselves i think they've uh, made a made a made a claim at least in game one that they need to fulfill for the in the rest of the series Orlando Pirates, I, I think it's fair to say, have illustrated the dominance that they've been looking to have. It was very, very clinical from them. Mm. Uh, even when you saw them score their first goal, even when Orlando Pirates could take that moment to break out and try and get as many goals as they possibly could, I saw moments where Eliakim could have sent all three players on offense, instead rotated back to defense, keeping the control in the hands, in the palm of the hands of Orlando Pirates suited them very very well in this series i'll say as well graybeard mm. when you see this compared to the last match you can already tell the tempo which orlando pirates plays which just appears to be different at a, another level the setups for the double taps the flip resets that feel all too common the wall dashes from cams th this team is ready to play at that next level yeah, and, and what was evident in this game, firstly, the aggression, uh, the shots, they're out shooting the bros uh, two to one, um, but also composed in defense and very quick to counterattack. They don't rush their clears. They they try and keep it as tight as possible. And But when they break out, they break out with purpose and intent. And then also the demos, not a single demo from the bros team, which is quite passive given the meta of demos right now. Three from Orlando Pirates, so heavy on the aggression, but composed in defense. And it's funny how demos reach an international audience related to SSA. Of course, we had Tom setting the North American record this past regional, but still that international record is held by Snowy. So we, we look for yeah. the demos to play a factor in this region, mm -hmm. but you're right. The bros not quite meeting that mark. We're here in the game two, Orlando Pirates with a wonderful start to the series. Yeah, and then and, 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 and part, in part, the bros struggle with their aggressive attacking is first and foremost they got to figure out defending the aggression of Orlando Pirates before they can sort of have the chance to have some aggression themselves but it is the bros with early pressure the first 30 seconds but look at this the breakaway cams nearly getting the 50 in front of the net it is though intercepted and cleared away and the bros will once again have an opportunity but two players from bros stuck in the Orlando Pirates corner they got to be very cautious about that Pirates will punish them hard. 
They never know where that ball is going to come from the corner. Right now, it's in Happy Meal's hands. He looks for that double tap. Cannot find the second touch. Eliakim, a light touch as well to the backboard. So the shot taking not seeming as forceful, as lethal as it could right now from Orlando Pirates, but definitely still dangerous as they make their way back towards that same end once again Eliakim should be in rotation here takes it from the corner looks for that extra touch not necessarily towards the goal and it actually enables Yopego a long shot forcing cams up Christian W trying to get past all three defenders the pass comes out to 5 BS denied by Eliakim and Pirates survive my word, but they but they have survived. Not for the first time, they've survived an onslaught from the bros. And that's been one of their strong points is being composed in that defense, not getting not getting scrappy and panicky when when the pressure builds, but sort of always defending with intent and purpose rather than just get the ball away anyway. And now Eli taking it out toward the net. Japango can't save! And it goes in. Eli gets pirates on the board. Do not give this player boost, space, and the ball. These types of things will happen. There's no second touch off the wall, okay? This isn't necessarily your highly mechanical play, but the placement on the shot, reaching just the slot where the defender can't get, that is impressive nonetheless. So Orlando Pirates getting that first goal once again. Can they find two here? Cancer on the backboard. Good stop there from Christian W to to start to stall the force of the Pirates. And once again, Pirates on the board first. And as the, the point made in the first game, oh, that is such an awkward bounce. Cams is on it. My word, I was not expecting that bounce. And I don't think anybody else, like Christian certainly wasn't. That was savage and Cams benefits. Yeah, and, and listen, when the arena is playing in the favor of Orlando Pirates, I feel like the bros are feeling devastated here. It's a soul-crushing moment there for that bounce to go the way of the Pirates. But at the same time, Christian W., those are touches that he needs to connect on no matter where it is. Throw a little randomness uh, into that touch, but you know, it just suits Orlando Pirates who, you know, players like Camps, they're going to read those touches, no doubt about it, so... Happy Meal, Orlando Pirates, again, a 2-0 lead to work off of the bros. Need to get started soon. And not for the first time, seeing Yopego and Christian W getting a bit close together and stuck in the blue corner. Um, well, that we've seen it in their own corner. We've seen it in the blue corner. And uh, just in terms of their spacing and, and their communication with each other needs, uh, could do with a little bit of improvement and a clarity on who's going to be taking a play and moving it forward for them. Completely agree and listen a little bit of infield plays on the offensive side could suit their favor like right now that shot reaching the left side out of range for the defenders Christian W finds one yeah look at this all three Pirates players hugging hugging that front post and the double commit and mid-air collision was inevitable but lovely touch a nice angle from Christian W to bring it to a one goal game there we go. Once again, the bros able to find a goal after the scoring streak begins for Orlando Pirates. And they work off of this initial momentum. It does appear to working outside of the corners and more towards the infield does suit this offense better. But for them, it's about getting the ball in that position in the mm. first place. They will now work the ball Broadway Street trying to make it work. All right, Christian off the backboard, follows it up, doesn't get any power or direction on the on the rebound off that backboard. So the 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 attack fizzles slightly, but it is still them with possession and territorial advantage. But a defensive demo might give space for Orlando Pirate. Here comes Eli toward the net. Easy pickup for 5BS, but it's not a convincing clear. Cams has got it. Eli Cams, 5BS saves. Oh my, okay, Orlando Pirates trying to run away with another game once again, but the bros will not allow it, not at this time at least. 5BS trying to fill in position for Christian W, who was eliminated from the stage. He'll come off the respawn with a pass up field. 5BS could not find that redirect, but you love the creativity starting to be injected in this team. They're looking to take Orlando by <laughs> Pirates by surprise for this next goal. Yapego needs to respond and get to that ball. Happy Meal activated and enabled oh. the second Touch on the goal line. Cams can't bring it around. Eliakim behind the play. The Bros will not allow a third goal. 
Oh man, oh man, they are hanging on by their skin right now. They've got 10 seconds. They have to get it out of their half. They've got to get to the other side. They're about to be two games down here. And now it's opened up. Can Christian get there? It's a scramble. They can't keep it up. Pirates take game two. And they they win game two, not as convincingly as game one. But Pyro, I, I have a feeling that Aquadome for me is, for some reason, the most RNG of all the maps. Yes. Uh, there's always weird chaos with, with, with Aquadome. Teams that dominate struggle on Aquadome. I could not agree more. My history of gassing Rocket League game two is always the wild card. I feel like it's so important that Orlando Pirates survive this, right? Because mm. this feels like the game most likely for the bros to surprise and retake. I mean, let's talk about part of their strategy that they were finally able to adapt. It was getting out of that corner, finding the infield passes mm. and making that pressure back into the mid lane. Once Orlando Pirates realize that that could be a vulnerability for them, they're going to learn how to close that off. So, yeah, winning this game by just one point is uh, really critical for Orlando mm. Pirates and puts them in position to sweep. But, hey, let's remember, you know, ATK, they could have swept, but were spoiled in game three. So you never would know what the bros could bring. Well, this is this is a make or break game for the bros. And, and you know, you come out of that second game in one of two ways. Either there's a bit of confidence with the way you played, you made it hard for Orlando Pirates, or you get frustrated because there were opportunities and you couldn't close it out and you go on to lose. And they so the, I'm not sure how they're going to come into this game. Are they frustrated or they're going, man, guys, we pushed them. We can improve here. But they have to win this game three. We all we, we speak ad nauseum about how hard a game seven or, or a best of seven reverse sweep is. And and key to them winning this game is getting a lead. Getting an opening goal and it almost comes, but Cam's denies. <laughs> You almost spoke it into existence, Greybeard. It was that close. The bros heard you, and we're looking to make a move right there. But Atlanta Pirates say not that easily. Not going to happen. One goal is all they've been able to muster in these games, and each of these games. And the bros, they would have loved to find it that early. But instead, have to work up the field once again. 5BS controlling that midfield. Double commit there from Orlando Pirates, but they are able to find Happy Meal. This is dangerous off the backboard. Can't read it quite there. Oh, and with the demolition, Pirates were looking deadly, but the ball's to mm. the other end. And they were being very aggressive. Every player over in the bro half, they do get back to their defensive duty. Eli doesn't find it off the wall. 5BS with a miss. And clearly both teams trying to up the tempo, up the pace. And that will make things difficult on the reads and getting to those balls cleanly. Cams now finds Eli. What a redirect. What a play. Oh, Pyro Pirates once more in front first. <laughs> The give and go. It's incredible. That's the only lane that the Orlando Pirates could possibly score. And an unseen angle from Eliakim near the back line. These are two players that you love to see together. This is why SSA and the roster changes. And they were worth it. Come on. Plays like this. Unbelievable. The chemistry from Cams and Eliakim, we are starting to see blossom, and I, I feel like we're only seeing the start of it, Greybeard. Yeah, big danger signs there for the bros. The Pirates up in front first once again, and we saw that through the Swiss, when they score, when they have a lead, they're like, uh, they're a tenacious bulldog. They won't let go. So that's, that's danger times, but so much time left here, and I just wanted the bros maybe take a bit of time Go forward with a bit more intent rather than just trying to 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 meet the pace of the game. Find a way through. Um, and and they, they do get over. They are building the pressure. Christian W shot is saved by Eli. The pace is undeniably accelerated. That's the thing that you have to understand when you play against Orlando Pirates. Players like Eli can will push that pace as quickly as it could possibly go. But that could breed mistakes on the back line. The defense may be one step too far ahead. They miss the touch and cre create an opening for Christian. And Christian, uh, the, clearly the team striker, he has, when there are opportunities, he's mostly done very well to find them to find the angles find those shots on goal and uh he does it there again and they're level 
So they, they haven't gone too behind. That's good news for them. Now they're level. Now they're going to build the lead. Find a way to have a lead against Orlando Pirates and see how they respond to that pressure. Because there's an...